everyone. Hi, everyone. This is Kiana. And this is Andrew. And welcome to, to the, the Soul, Soul Journey Project. Project. Here at the Soul Journey Project, we provide education, inspiration, and motivation on your journey through life. Welcome back to another excursion on the Soul Journey Project. We're yes. so happy that uh, you decided to join us today mm -hmm. as we continue with our series on identity. Mm -hmm. Identity. Mm -hmm. yeah. That really is everything. You have to know who you are. You have to know what you're capable of if you are to achieve great things. Mm -hmm. In addition to knowing who you are, you also have to know that you are deserving of your dreams. You are deserving of your desires. Because many of us have been told information over the years, whether it's from family, loved ones, the media, the church, I was gonna say religious groups, told things like you're not worthy or you know, money is the root of all evil, or... If you have if you have a lot of things, you're materialistic. Yep. Um, th all these different kind of ideas. All you need is just enough. Right, right. Don't and, ask for more. Right, you know. there's a ton of related ideas mm -hmm. to this kind of way of thinking that suggests if you have or you want to achieve anything greater mm -hmm. than what you have now, somehow that's wrong or or that's evil or that's sinful. Yeah, it's not an enlightened path. Right. Yeah. Right. I think most people have this idea of someone who's spiritual as someone who's completely detached from all worldly possessions mm -hmm. and they're just going to meditate in the Himalayan mountains for the rest of their lives. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that path. If that is the path that you really feel mm -hmm. drawn to, by all means, mm -hmm. get to the Himalayas as soon as possible. <laughs> all right. But that is not the only path to be spiritual. Right. That is not the only path uh, to, to prove to yourself of your identity. That is not the only path of spirituality. Mm -hmm. That is a path, but that is not the only path mm -hmm. to spirituality. And just because you have things, it doesn't determine who you are. Mm -hmm. The yep. things do not make you who you are. Mm -hmm. Things, whether they be money or material possessions, are amplifiers. Yep. They are morally neutral, but they are amplifiers. Mm -hmm. What do we mean by that? They enhance who you already are. So if you're a loving, kind-hearted, generous person, when you get more things, that's still going to be who you are. And in fact, it enhances your ability yes. to be generous. Because you can give more. Right. Freely with no regard, right? But if you are someone that's selfish, kind of hoarding, only looking out for who, you know, for you and your own and not really branching out further than that, kind of greedy, then money will enhance that side of things too. And too often we feel like, well, when I have this, then I can be generous. Mm -hmm. Or then I can, you know, you, you kind of put this qualifier on if this then however it doesn't work that way that's how you do one thing is how you do everything right yes i mean if you're generous you're going to be generous no matter what your situation mm -hmm. i know some people who are extremely poor mm -hmm. who are the most generous folks you will ever meet mm -hmm. and we know some people i mean we don't know them personally but we we sh we know that there are people out there mm -hmm. who have a lot of material things mm -hmm. who are stingy Yep. And we know people in all in between, in all different circumstances, some who are generous and kind hearted and loving and some who are greedy and stooges and, you know, all those other kind of things. Mm -hmm. But it's not the stuff that yep. makes them that way. Yep. They are who they are, mm -hmm. regardless of the material possessions that they have. Right. And we have to be really careful about the judgments that we place on people that may have more things than we do. Because what, th what that is really saying is that you don't believe that you can achieve that. 
So you're judging them through that lens. You're putting limits on what they have based on what you see yourself or don't see yourself having. That's and, a great point. Yeah, yeah. And that can hinder you from achieving your dreams because everything is all connected. Whatever you sow is what you reap. So if you're sowing envy, jealousy, bitterness towards someone that may have something or assuming that they got it from an ill means, then you're pretty much telling the universe that you don't want those things because of that energy that you're putting behind judging that other person. Right. A lot of times it's not that we are Mm anti-money. It's we have a poverty mindset ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so when we see other people with money, we transpose our belief system about money and our ability to acquire it Mm -hmm. upon them. Mm -hmm. And we say it's wrong for them to have it because I'm not experiencing the same level of prosperity that they are. Mm. And really, it's just stinking thinking. Right. You can have whatsoever you desire. Mm -hmm. You will have to earn it. You have to create it in your mind's eye. You have to follow the steps that we've already laid out. Mm -hmm. But you can have whatsoever you desire. There's no limits. Yep. But you can't have what you despise. Mm. That's good. If you despise someone who's wealthy, just purely on the basis that they're wealthy, Mm -hmm. you can't have that. That energy that you're putting out there is actually going to repel yep. prosperity from you. Mm-hmm. But on the flip side, you have to be bold yeah. about what you want. And that's really the root topic of our of our video today. You have to be bold. Kiana laid out in the last video four different lessons that she learned from manifesting the furniture. Mm-hmm. Lesson one was know what you want. Mm -hmm. Know it definitely. You can have no qualms, no confusion Mm -hmm. about what you desire. Mm -hmm. There has to be a certain boldness that you have to walk with. Okay? You have to have some dog in you, as they say. (laughs) Some swagger about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what your external circumstances say, Mm -hmm. you have to know that you know that you are worthy and deserving of your desire. Yep. See, we've been told through many channels that we're not worthy, we're not deserving. All that's a lie. Right. Throw it out. You fell for the Mm okey-doke. Throw that all out. Get rid of that. Mm Mm-hmm. And if they're trying to use scripture or any other document to justify their position, Mm -mm. just ignore it because they're clearly misinterpreting it. Because if you are someone who's familiar with scripture and you're being intellectually honest and reading the scripture, you cannot walk away from reading scripture without the impression that God desires for his people to prosper his children which we are all children of God Mm -hmm. to prosper and be in health even as our soul prosper it you can see examples of this in both the Old and New Testaments Mm -hmm. of the people of God prospering Mm -hmm. materially yep not Not, just spiritual blessing right (laughs) not just spiritual because we're three part beings yep We do live in this physical world. Mm -hmm. So physical, material things are going to be a part of our experience here. Mm -hmm. And we are to live life in abundance and to the full Mm -hmm. on all three levels. If you prosper in your mind and you prosper in your spirit, you can't help but prosper physically. Mm -hmm. Because the three are one. And what great example is it to be able to be prospering physically and to be able to just be a light and be a blessing in that way? You can be a blessing in a much grander way when you got some money. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I mean, think about the foundations, the schools, the orphanages, the Hospitals. hospitals, the scholarships. 
you know, like new innovations that you can create or invest in that will improve people's lives. See, poor people can't invest in stuff. Poor people don't build schools. Mm -hmm. Poor people don't dig wells. Right. Poor people don't create housing developments. Mm -hmm. Poor people don't create jobs. Create jobs. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's just be honest. I'm not, this is no disrespect to someone who finds themselves in poverty. Mm -hmm. I'm just being realistic about the situation here. Right. So there is no, there is no pride in poverty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. I've had a little and I've had a lot. A lot's better. <laughs> okay. Now I can't say I've lived in abject poverty. I have not. But I'm going to tell you what, cold showers get old real fast. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Walking around the house with candlelight. It gets old real quick. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's not kid ourselves here. Mm -hmm. This is not about materialism. This is not letting things rule our lives. No, we have dominion over things. Yep. And many times taking dominion over things is kind of like baby step one. Mm. That's the least of things. Many people think they have spiritual blessings and I have no need for the material things, but but they're bitter, they're angry, they're, you know, all those sorts of things. So it's like, well, that's not spiritual blessings. You're not displaying love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. You're not displaying any of those things, right? But when, when we can learn to take dominion over the physical, we can kind of keep going level up, level up, level up. Because when you are poor, your focus is on what you have and what you don't have. And it's on yourself many times. You're not able to be, to supersede those things and be as free as you could be if you were in a better situation, right? Exactly. And you know, that word dominion is kind of a Bible-ish word or an old, old English kind of word. But what it really means is you are the master mm -hmm. of the things in your, in your world, in your sphere. The things do not have you. Right. You don't serve the things. Mm -hmm. The things serve you, mm -hmm. which is the right order, the right priority. Okay. If you have control over the things, you can freely give them to whomsoever you choose mm -hmm. with no concern about losing anything. Right. But if the things have you, you grip everything so tight because you're so worried about, well, I may not never get this again. Mm -hmm. I may not have had this kind of money before and again. I may not have, you know, you get into this kind of mindset of needing to hoard. Mm -hmm. You don't need to hoard anything. You are a creator. Right. Whatsoever you desire, you can create. Mm -hmm. But you have to have boldness. Yes. You can't be timid when you're going after your dream, when mm -hmm. you're going after your desire. Mm -hmm. You can't have a double mind. You can't be feeling guilty about wanting that nice car. But then, but I still want it. But ooh what they gonna say about me and you know you, you can't have all that contradiction child <laughs> you need to go on somewhere <laughs> we're worried about what other people yeah are going to think about you mm -hmm. they're gonna think something about you whether you have the nice car or you don't yep so you can't if, if other people is the thing holding you back from your dream mm -hmm. it must not be your dream it must not be something you really desire. Yeah. If other people's judgment of you can stop you from moving forward in what you really want, mm -hmm. you don't really want it. Because mm -hmm. other people are going to be there regardless. Yep. And you may want to think about getting rid of some folks <laughs> or not, not having, there's some folks, obviously if it's family, you can't totally get rid of them, you know, but you can just begin to maybe not share your true heart's desires and passions 
if someone is not at the level of where you are. It's not about being better than anyone. But if you are trying to achieve something that those in your sphere have not achieved, you need to broaden that sphere. Right. Because they will keep you at the level that they're at. There's so many success gurus and, and success coaches who make the statement that your life is the sum total of the five people you spend the most time with. Mm -hmm. So basically what they're suggesting is look at the lives of the five closest people to you. Mm -hmm. Your life is the average of those five. Yep. So maybe you want to take a look at your associations mm -hmm. and say, okay, what kind of life are they living? And is it a life I want for myself? Mm -hmm. If it is, then great. You you found your tribe and you're in a great spot. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the five people in your the five, you know, closest folks to you mm -hmm. and you're looking at their life like, mm, I don't want that. Well, you're the average of them. Right. So you're really looking at a reflection of where you're at. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not a negative judgment. Please don't misunderstand what we are saying. Mm -mm. But we all know that we all have different desires in life. Mm -hmm. This is not about everybody's going to be a billionaire or a millionaire. Mm -hmm. if that's what you desire. Great. Go for it. But everybody doesn't have that desire. And that's okay. But whatever your desire is, whatever your dream is, is going to be a big deal for you. Mm -hmm. So you don't, we're not diminishing anybody's dream. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is for you, that's what it's going to be for you. And no matter what it is, there's always going to be naysayers to try to tell you, you can't do that. Right. Why would you want to do that? Nobody in our neighborhood ever has ever done that. Nobody in our family has ever done that. Mm -hmm. There ain't no money in that. Whatever. Right. People will always come up with reasons mm -hmm. for why you shouldn't follow your heart. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're saying. Th those are the kind of things you need to shut the door to. Right. Not necessarily the people, but the, the ideas. Right. Yep. Right. And you don't need to share your heart with everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody is not going to support you and what you want to do. Especially if this is new for you. And this is new to go after your dreams. This is new to live the life that you desire you're still kind of fragile in this. So in some ways you're really protecting your heart, you're guarding your heart from that negativity because you're like, look, I have enough of it in me already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of that and build myself up. Yeah. Right? So part of it is just that protecting factor so that you're not allowing that to derail you. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. everything is a mindset. Everything is a state of mind, a mm -hmm. state of being. Mm -hmm. Neville talks about that all, everything that we see happening in the world with people are states. They're states of mind. Mm -hmm. Prosperity is a state of mind first. Poverty is a state of mind first. Mm -hmm. Sickness is a state of mind first. Success, failure, you name it. They're states of mind. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, you have to enter into the state of which you want to inhabit. Mm -hmm. If I want to live in Florida, I need to find my way to Florida. And I'm going to inhabit in that state, the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. Well, likewise, if I want to live in the state called wealth, mm -hmm. then I need to inhabit in mind that state. I need to move there in mind. Mm -hmm. And when I move there in mind, then I will start to see my surroundings transform and conform to the predominant state of mind that I hold. Now, it's going to come through legitimate means. It's not a magic trick. Mm -hmm. Some teachers who teach this kind of forget that part. There will be natural things that will have to happen to bring you, bring forth the manifestation of your desire. Mm -hmm. Okay? But you don't start with the natural action. You start with the mental action. Mm -hmm. And when you embed the mental action on your subconscious, as we have been discussing this up to this point, you will naturally start to flow mm -hmm. in, the nat in the actions that you need to take mm -hmm. to bring forth your desire.
people will be introduced into your life. You'll make connections and, you know, be at a coffee shop and just happen to spark a conversation. And they're right. they're learning all the same things that you're learning that we're talking about. And it's exciting and you exchange numbers. Just things that just happen very naturally. Things we may call coincidence. Right. There's no coincidence. There's no such thing as coincidence. No, we create all of that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But going, going back to the point, though, boldness, yeah. definite purpose. Mm -hmm. You cannot have what you secretly despise. Mm -hmm. It will not come into your life. Mm -mm. So if you're holding any kind of grudges or you're feeling any old type of way about people who are who are rich or are wealthy or who are successful or who are CEOs or whatever the deal is. You're going to have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Because really what you're doing is you are saying remember your subconscious is deductive. So if you're judging someone else harshly, mm -hmm. you're actually judging yourself that same way. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying that, you know, they ain't they shouldn't have XYZ well, your subconscious mind interprets that to mean, I should not have X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. Don't bring that into my life. Don't I don't that. want it. Right. You're mm -hmm. saying that is something that I do not want and therefore it should be repelled. Mm -hmm. I don't want health. I yeah. don't want wealth. I don't want peace. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And remember, it's about the feeling in which you put into it. A lot of times, things that we don't like, we put a lot of energy. Mm-hmm into expressing ourselves about those things. Right. And that's what will then remain in your subconscious. Mm -hmm. But for the things that you desire, you have to be bold. The scripture says, come boldly to the throne of grace and you shall receive grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. But the, the preface was you got to come bold. Right. Yep. The universe, God, spirit rewards those who are bold. Mm -hmm. And I get what I want. Who will step out there. Yep. As we say in the church, stepping out on faith. Boldly, mm -hmm. not timidly, not, well, I guess I'll try because, you know. Never know what's going to happen. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You got to have a confidence. Mm -hmm. To other people, you may sound crazy. Yep, and that's okay. And that's just fine. That's their limitation that you're seeing. Yep. Don't worry about that. Mm -mm. That's actually a good thing. If other people think your ideas are crazy, that's that's a good thing. <laughs> they thought all the great inventors' ideas were crazy too. All of them. And now we admire them. Yep. Folks thought te uh, Nikola Tesla was crazy. People think, you know. Elon Musk is crazy. People thought that Jeff Bezos was crazy. People think that mm -hmm. Bill, you know, Bill Gates was crazy. I mean, you name it. Anybody who has achieved anything worth worthwhile mm -hmm. from any industry, from any arena, somebody thought they were crazy. Mm -hmm. Why do you think you are going to be the next Michael Jordan, LeBron James? Right. You're from Akron, Ohio. Who comes from Akron? <laughs> Okay? You see what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you can't listen to what other people say. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And the more bold you are, the quicker you can see things manifesting. The bolder, the bigger. Yeah. The bolder good. you are, yep. the bigger your manifestation. Mm hmm mm hmm And get that's out, the truth. Yeah, get out the kiddie pool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to dream big because there are no limits. No limits. The only limit is the limit you put on yourself. Yep. So dream big. Mm -hmm. Imagine better than the best you know. You got some good quotes today. That was Neville. <laughs> Can't take credit for that one. <laughs> so that is our message for you today. Mm -hmm. Set aside those thoughts and ideas of limitation, the things that have been imposed upon us. And let's dream big and let's be bold. Mm -hmm. Let's step out there. Let's imagine 
great things for ourselves. Hold to our vision, no matter what happens around us. Mm -hmm. Even if around us all hell is breaking loose, hold to your vision. Yeah. Because it's bringing you to an expected end. So your action step, although there's been many of them that could be used throughout this entire one, <laughs> but notice if you have any guilt about your desires. Or shame. Shame. Judgment. Yep, judgment, all of that. Notice if any of that is present for you based on the examples that we shared. And give yourself permission to let it go. Give yourself permission to live your best life freely with no preconditions. Yep. And that's your action step. Great. As always, folks, we really do appreciate you guys joining mm -hmm. us. We see that the number of subscribers on our channel is increasing and we appreciate that support. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, continue to share, continue to like, continue to subscribe. We would love to start receiving some of your feedback in the comments. Mm -hmm. um, we just are so appreciate, appreciative of this opportunity to share these great truths with you. And we really hope that uh, it's bringing value into your life. Absolutely. So as always, folks, we encourage you to, to take, take the step. step.